the next phase of our testing is going to be the fuel pump. Now, we can test the fuel pump's ability to deliver pressure and volume by analyzing current flow. The maximum pressure we can put out of a system is directly related to the current flow. Let me say that again. The maximum fuel pressure we can produce is directly related to current flow. If we can't get enough current into a pump, it is not going to be able to produce its maximum volume. Now, the other side of this is the volume is directly related to the pump's RPM. When we can't get enough power, which is voltage and current, into the pump, we can't get enough RPM. So in some ways, the maximum pressure and the maximum volume are tied very closely together. We can't get full pressure if we can't get full current flow. We can't get full RPM if we don't get full current flow. But the volume is directly related to RPM. So we can test these two things with a lab scope. We can use a DSO and a low current probe, and we can do the testing to find these. Now, first of all, we're going to give you an easy-to-read diagram. Yeah, I know this is a violation of our rules, but we're trying to get you to focus now on using the equipment. What we frequently do is remove the relay for the fuel pump, and we put a jumper in place and use our low amps probe like you see here to pick up current flow. Now, we could go up here and put it in the wiring. First of all, it's hard to get to, and we've got to get after this splice because this splice is sending current to other devices, and we don't want to look at anything but fuel pump current. We could get under the car and do it here. But again, it's more difficult to locate, but we can do it any of these places. Remember this diagram we just used earlier? If you do use this at the fuel pump, in this particular case, we can't even use our system we're just using because this is going to power up injectors off of here. So we have to come down here at some other point to pick this up. We're going to supply power to all these systems. So as we said, if you only look just at the fuel pump, we put our low amps probe down here. Notice this stops at the forward inertia switch. One of the places we can get unintended resistance is at the forward inertia switch. So be sure if fuel pump current is not right, you have a good inertia switch. We're going to have other places we're going to talk about too. The other thing we're going to talk about in this system is we're going to supply power to a, a fuel pump driver module. Now, the amps will vary with pump duty cycle, so don't expect full current flow. I was recently working on a, a, a Crown Victoria. We had 50% duty cycle, and we had 3 amps at the pump. We expected a pump to have 6 amps, but at 50% duty cycle, we expect that, that 6 amp to be cut in half. So for that vehicle, 3 amps were normal, but it was 3 amps because we were controlling it. In talking about this amperage, we talked about the inertia switch. We've also got to talk about ground. The other half of completing our circuit, back to our basic program we've been talking about, is you're going to have good ground to get full current, all the way back to battery negative. Now, the other thing that's going to happen is control. We're going to be getting controls from the PCM to change the duty cycle. This is the way Ford, on these newer vehicles, controls fuel pressure and you'll see changes in fuel pump current to match changes in the duty cycle. So all of this is available. But let's talk about now getting down to analyzing. The current is going to give us a good indication of the condition of the pump if B plus and ground are normal. Say that again. We check B plus and we check ground first thing if this current doesn't look normal. First rule, don't ignore B plus and ground. Then. Excessive current flow means the pump is working too hard and it will usually have lower than normal RPM. It's being loaded down. Look for a crush line, a collapse filter, or something causing this pump to work extremely hard to try to generate pressure. Now, the other side of that is lower than normal current indicates the pump isn't doing enough work or it has low power. If I have low voltage, my pump will run too slow. I have low voltage because I've got a voltage drop somewhere in the wiring or maybe in that inertia switch. So pump current is going to give us a lot of indication. And by analyzing the waveform, we can get the overall condition 
of the brushes and commutator contacts. Let's take a look at how these brushes work. Now this is a, a motor we have removed from a vehicle and you, when a brush we remove from a motor. This is not the normal position of this brush and motor. With that being said, we want to show you how this works because it works the same. On the right, the brush is making full contact with one of the split in this commutator. The brush on the right is making full contact. We get maximum flow. The brush on the left is making partial contact with two different rings on the split screen commutator. The other thing to keep in mind about these brushes, they can be unintended resistances. If the brush does not make good contact because of wear, it's going to reduce our current flow, which will reduce our speed. We'll talk more about that later, but let's look at these positions. On the right, where I'm making full contact, as I look at my scope pattern at the bottom, it's a series of little humps. The maximum on those current flow humps is caused when I have full contact. On the left, I'm going into a valley because I'm going into partial contact. Not quite making full contact with either of the rings. It's going to go down and up. How often these blips occur directly relates to how fast these brushes are moving over these ring split rings. How fast is it making contact with this? If I look at this and I look at the amperage, on the left I'm looking at amperage. It's a 10 amp scale. I'm almost two-thirds of the way up. I'm at idle. I'm running 34 PSI. I'm drawing 7 amps. If I raise the pressure, it takes more amps. So the amperage I'm running is going to require the pump to work harder, and for pump to work harder, it needs more amperage. As I go up to 76 pounds, it's up to 9.6 amps, working much harder to deliver this extra pressure. I'm running twice the pressure. I take more amps. Let's look at fuel pressure versus RPM. At 34 PSI, I'm running 8,462 RPM. At 43 PSI, which is about 50% more, I'm running only 8,075 RPM. At 76 SPI, which is a little more double than we started before, I'm down to 7,398 RPM. So as I increase pressure, I increase current. As I increase the load by having higher pressure, I slow the pump down. If I'm looking at a pump running 10,000 RPM, I've got a pump that's not really pumping. Let me say it again. If I've got a pump running 10,000 RPM and I don't have super, super low pressure, I've got a bad pump. If I'm running 40 PSI and I got a 10,000 RPM pump, there's something wrong. It should be running slower than that. We're going to put the two together. Let's talk about measuring RPM. As I look at these humps, if you'll notice every eight hump, and I got a line on it here, every eight I get a taller spike out of this. So I'm going to mark one of them, go eight away and mark another one. That distance is the time it takes for one revolution of the pump. Let me say it again. That indicates, because I've got eight humps underneath that, that's one revolution of the pump. In one revolution of the pump, it takes 16.8 milliseconds. That's the time of one revolution. I have 60,000 milliseconds. Okay, if I take the 60,000 milliseconds and divide it by 16.8, I figure I'm running 3,571 RPM. Now let me tell you what we have on this pump. This pump, I'm expecting to see 6 amps because I'm running about 40 PSI. I'm expecting to see somewhere around 7, 8,000 RPM. I got low amperage. I got low speed. What I have with this pump, I either have low power, not good B+, plus, not good ground, or I've got unintended resistance in the brushes. Let me say that again. Either I've got low B+, plus, excessive ground voltage, or I have unintended resistance in the brushes. If I've got good contact with B+, plus, I've got a good ground at the motor, and I'm only running 3,500 RPM, and I'm only drawing 3 amps, I'm not making good contact at my brushes. I can't get full RPM. Without full RPM, I can't get full volume. 
this pump is going to cause drivability problems. This pump is going to cause low volume output. And eventually this pump is going to fail. This pump is used up most of its available life and is starting to deteriorate. How long it's going to take? I don't know. Does the customer have to replace it right now? No. Is this a high reliability important vehicle that wants to have uh, like an emergency vehicle? Yes. Then replace the pump. Don't wait for it to go bad. One of the things we say is work the pump. When we're doing this, we want to make sure that it stops and starts several times and doesn't have any bad spots in the commentator. We're going to watch the waveform. If it looks really erratic and it's been in there pump for a while, it's probably a bad pump. If I got an erratic pattern where they're not nice and wavy like we looked at, the current's low, RPM's low, you probably have a bad pump. A bad waveform by itself may simply mean the brushes haven't made good contact and it's a brand new pump. Brand new pumps look bad. Don't live by the waveform, but pay attention to it. Look for pumps that may have intermittent problems that can catch you. So utilizing this, you can find pumps that are going to go bad and repair them before they actually cause a failure in the field. This is going to wind up our problem of working on our P0171 lean fuel mixture. Now we're going to start through different systems and talk about how to get the maximum value out of your testing. How do you identify good operation?